Well, hello there. In today's video, we're going to go over some tiny little niggling bits that are left over from our series before we start diving into really game audio specific stuff, starting with the next video. So let's get into it. Okay, so here I am in Reaper with kind of a setup sound already, and I'm just going to hit play so you can hear what it is. So it's kind of this explosion layer sort of thing. And what I want to talk to you about is a feature that's similar to Logic Pro's bounce in place feature. So if you've used Logic before, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but there's a nice feature where basically you can bake in all the effects that you're working with onto a file itself. Or you can also take MIDI and convert it to audio. But for this video, I'm gonna talk about baking in effects. So I am going to load up a reverb onto this track and I'm gonna use my shortcut for that, which we set up in a previous video. And so now I have my FabFilter Pro R, which is my personal favorite reverb. And I'm just gonna close out of this and hit play. You can hear there's reverb on the sound. Great, nothing spectacular yet. But let's say I want to actually bake that reverb into this file itself. Maybe I'm running low on CPU, for example, and I want to make sure that this reverb is kind of offloaded. It's baked into the file itself. It's not processing in real time anymore. Well, there's a way to do that. Just like in Logic Pro, there's an equivalent to this kind of bounce in place feature. So I'm going to hit shift question mark to bring up my kind of action list here. And what I'm going to show you is actually an interesting way to find different shortcuts, because sometimes you may know the command of a shortcut, but you may not know the name of it. So let's say hypothetically, I want to look up this kind of bounce in place, or as it's called, render tracks uh, function with the find shortcut option. So I can hit find shortcut up here. And my shortcut for that is control B. So I can hit control B, and now it will find whatever is mapped to that shortcut. So you can see here, render tracks to stereo tem stem tracks obeying time selection. That's what it's called. That's what you're looking for. Render tracks to stereo or mono stem tracks obeying time selection. So basically what that means is whatever track I have selected, which is this one on the left, and whatever range of time selection I have covered, it will bake our effects into that file. That's a very simple way of putting it. There's a lot more to this, but for the purposes of this series and this video, that's what we're going to talk about. And this is only one way to do it. There are a trillion ways to go about bouncing in place or rendering in place, as they call it in Cubase. There's so, so, so many ways. This is just one of the easier ways to start getting into it. So I'm sure you have your own way. And if you do, great, fine, no worries there. But this is just one of the ways. So I'm going to zoom out. Let's say I want to, you know, kind of highlight the regions around this file itself. And now I'm going to hit Control B. So what that did was it put the reverb and the sound itself into a new file and muted the original track. So we still have the original here and the reverb's still on it, but we also have a new file here with the reverb baked into it. So now if I hit play. So as you can see down here in the mixer, there's no reverb plugin on the track itself, but we have the reverb in it. Now, this can be really useful. You can do this on a MIDI region as well, and that will convert the MIDI to audio, so that can be really handy. Or you can also put more plugins on this kind of pre-reverberated sound and work with it from there. One that saves you CPU in case you're working on a laptop or something like that, but it also makes it so that you start to think differently about the sounds you're making. Maybe working with a reverberated sound, you're now thinking, okay, I want to do some different things with this, as opposed to just shifting plugins around constantly. You're kind of committed to a course of action. So that makes things actually really, really fun and makes you think a little bit differently about what you're doing. So I loaded up a instance of Serum and have some MIDI notes here with probably the least satisfying synth sound in the world. Just so weak. I absolutely love it. Not to say Serum is bad. It's a wonderful, wonderful synth. This is just a terrible sound that I made just for this video. So that's the sound we have. Let's say we want to convert it to audio. So we can, of course, drag this region over our MIDI area here and hit Control B just like we did before. But there's an easier way to kind of speed that process up just a little bit. So what I want to do is show you a new command and I'm going to bring up my commands menu here. And I'm going to say set time selection to items. So this is the 
command I want to show you is time selection colon set time selection to items. Like I talked about in a previous video, items are any kind of block that you see. It can be a MIDI block, it can be a audio block, whatever it may be, that's an item. So this kind of square here, that's an item in and of itself. Any kind of grouping of waveforms is also an item. So if I go over this and hit our shortcut for that command I just showed you, which is P, you can see our time selection snaps to the start and end of this file. So instead of having to drag, I can just click that, hit P, and now I can hit Control B to render this or bounce this in place. That's what they call it in Logic and Cubase. And now we convert that synth from MIDI into audio. And now we can do quite a lot more with it. We can cut it up, we can reverse it, all sorts of fun stuff. I always do this when I have synth sound design that's going on. Eventually, when I'm happy with the synth itself, I'll convert it to audio, and that makes it so much more malleable. I can time stretch it, I can shrink it, I can reverse it, I can chop it up in weird ways, all sorts of stuff. So I usually go through that process at some point in my workflow. Okay, there are a couple things left I need to show you, but before we get into it, of course, of course, we're gonna have tea with Thane. Okay, so something I want to show you now has to do with fades. So let's talk about how to fade stuff in and out. And that's very easy to do in Reaper. One of the easiest ways is to just find one of these corners. And this is common in many DAWs. You can find one of these top right or top left corners. And you'll see my mouse kind of turns into a fade icon. And I can just click and drag. Nothing too crazy about that. Nothing spectacular, probably exactly what you expected. And what we can talk about now is crossfade. So let's say I copy paste this. So you can see that it's automatically creating a crossfade over top this other file. So to have that turn on, you want to go to this icon here that says auto crossfade enabled. So when that's off and drag over, you can see there's no crossfade being formed. It's just mixing these two fades we have here. So I'll turn those off. You can see we don't have any crossfade happening. Turn that back on. And just like that, we have crossfades happening. I usually keep this on. It's very, very handy. Just so you know that exists. Now, if I double click this first file here that has the fade in on it, I can see here in this right hand area section, we're not going to go into all of this. There's a lot we can get into is we can actually change the fade shape. So I can change the fade in or fade out, which is the second one into whatever shape that I want or whatever predetermined shape that I want. Now there's a lot to do with fade shapes in Reaper, but this is just one of the ways that you can change the fade shape of whatever it is you're working with. So I can change the fade shape just by clicking any one of these and then I have to make sure I hit apply or okay at the bottom and you can see it'll change just like that. Nothing too crazy there. But you obviously want to set up shortcuts for this. And I actually don't remember the name of the command that I'm looking for. So I'm going to hit find shortcut. And for me, it's control shift I. And just like that, we have my two commands that I use all the time. Cycle through fade in shapes and cycle through fade out shapes, which is for me, shift control I and shift control O. So I'm going to put a fade out here as well, just so you can see. And if I hit shift control I, it cycles through the fade shapes every time I hit that shortcut and same for sh control shift O. I can hit both at the same time too. If I just want to play around with that, but you may want things to fade in or fade out differently depending on what you're looking for. Now you may not hear a difference between every single one of these. It really depends on the sound and how you want things to decay, but it's a good thing to know. Now this last thing I want to show you in this video is something called dynamic split items. And you may know this feature in Logic or other DAWs as something called strip silence or remove silence. This is similar. So let's look up the shortcut for that. So dynamic, oh, there we go. Dynamic split items. So that's what I have assigned to D, but you can assign it to whatever you want, obviously. I'll click this region. I'll hit D. And you'll see we have this window come up. And we have lots of settings and we're not going to go into all of these but basically we can set up different thresholds for when this 
kind of feature should look at the transients, the kind of beginnings of each of our sounds, and when it should create these automatic splits. So I can play around with these settings until I see, okay, it's splitting each of these files up individually, and you can't really tell what the second one, there's a blue dotted line going through it to denote that, okay, this file is indeed gonna be split into its own separate region. So then I can hit split down here, and we can set up way more settings, but we're just gonna leave it at that. Then hit split, and now you see we have four distinct items that we can play around with. So that's really useful for sound effects like the one you saw earlier that have multiple variations of the same sort of sound kind of back to back with multiple different takes with silence in between. You can just split them up really easily and then play around with each of these individual files. It's not usually perfect. It doesn't do an absolutely perfect job every time unless you really dial in the settings, but it can speed up your workflow a great deal. Okay, that's it for today's video. Before we start diving into like exporting and working with game audio middleware and those sorts of things in future videos. So thank you so much for watching as usual, of course. Of course, hit like and comment and subscribe and all that standard good stuff that every YouTuber tells you to do. And if you're interested in working in the game industry full time as an audio pro, whether it be a composer or a sound designer, then sign up for my newsletter. That's where I give out two free courses that teach you how to network and work in the game industry and also write exclusive articles, ebooks, give out free sounds so that you can get lots of work in the game industry. Yes, even during a global pandemic and no matter where in the world you live, I teach you how to network wherever you are in the world and get jobs coming in, whether paid or free, depending on your skill level and your experience level, no matter where you are in the world. So that's all through my newsletter. So sign up for that and I'll see you in the next one. <music>